In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a button for your games inside of Photoshop. And I'm also going to show you how to create two buttons, one that's switched off and one that is switched on. Don't forget to subscribe. OK, let's begin. In Photoshop, we're going to create a new file. This is going to be 1920 by 1080. I'm going to click OK. Uh, and so that we can see what we're doing, I'm just going to take the paint bucket tool uh, choose a black color, just drag it all the way down into the corner and just fill so that we can see what we're doing. Now I'm going to come down to my um, rectangle tool, choose the rounded rectangle, a radius of 75 pixels, fill color of white and no stroke. Just going to draw roughly a button shape, something like this. Uh, that is 797 pixels in width, 413 pixels in height. Now this is way bigger than a button normally would be on the screen, but we're creating it much larger so that we can shrink it down later, and this has an anti-aliasing effect in order to get rid of any jagged edges. Now I want to convert this into pixels, so I'll right click and rasterize layer so that I can modify this now. And I'm gonna add two extra um, rounded rectangles. Uh, now this time the fill color, I want to choose a gray color. I'm going to click on the color picker, choose sort of a metallic gray, let's say like this, and I'm going to copy that hexadecimal value. So control and C as we're going to use that later. So now I'm just going to draw uh, a specific shape. I might keep it relatively thin, something like this. Um, make sure it's nicely aligned with the center of this and I'm going to duplicate that by dragging it down onto the new layer icon using shift on the keyboard and the down arrow key I'm just going to move this down so that it's um, a mirror opposite now I want to take both of those uh, shapes and merge them so just holding shift I'm going to right click and merge the two shapes Okay, I want to take both the rounded rectangle copy one and two, and I want to duplicate both. So I'm just going to drag those down onto the new layer. Just switch off those for now. And then using these uh, rounded rectangle two copy, I can do select and oh, it's still a shape. So I need to right click and rasterize that to turn it into pixels. Then select and load selection so that I can select those items. Now I can switch those off, go back to my original rounded rectangle one, just press delete to cut those shapes out. So select and deselect so that I end up with this sort of a shape. Now I can just switch that one off, go back to these top items that I have and the rounded rectangles at the top, I can right click and uh, rasterize that layer. I want to go to FX and give it a stroke. And this is where we need the hexadecimal value. So I'm just going to select this and do Control and V. So that it's the same color. Click OK. And that's going to be roughly about a 12 on there. Now I want to copy that effect and put it onto the rounded rectangle one copy. So I can uh, right click on the top here. I can choose Copy Layer Style. Click on this one, right click and Paste Layer Style. And that automatically gets copied. Great. I want to uh, rasterize both of those effects. So right click and rasterize the layer style also on the top. And then I want to combine both of these objects together. So right click and merge the two layers together. Now I can go to FX, bevel and emboss, and I'm going to choose 969 as the depth. So I get this nice hard edge and then uh, an inner shadow in order to darken that down a bit. Click OK. And then once again, I want to right click and rasterize that layer style. So that we've got kind of an outer edge going on there that looks kind of interesting. I want to uh, switch a couple of items on. I've got this rounded rectangle to copy that I no longer need, so I can get rid of that. However, the rounded rectangle one, I'm just going to drag this up and uh, this is just the inside part here. So when, first I want to do FX and a inner shadow. So you're just going to drop that down just a little bit. This is pretty good. Uh, I also want a gradient overlay. And I might give this sort of a purple color. So uh, a deep purple and then a much lighter purple. So 
something like this so that we get this really nice kind of gradient. I'm going to click OK on that. I'm also going to add an inner glow as well. Uh, so the inner glow, the size of this, I'm going to have around uh, 120. So it really comes in. And the opacity down to maybe about a 30, possibly a 20, so that it just rounds out some of those edges a little bit more. Um, okay, I'm going to click OK on that. I'm going to right click and rasterize that layer style again. Uh, and this time, I want uh, an opposite for when it's switched on. So imagine that this is at the moment switched off. So if I duplicate this layer, and what I want to do now is change my blend mode to something like a linear dodge. So let me find linear dodge add. Notice how that really switches the item on now. So that's off, that is on. Okay, so it really gives it a dramatic uh, appearance. Uh, I also want to darken down this part in the middle, so I'm going to add some adjustment layers. So down on the adjustment layer, first of all, color lookup. I'm going to change this one to a teal orange plus contrast. It's really going to kind of darken that down quite a lot, and it's going to affect the overall color. Now, obviously, when I switch it on, I get this kind of an effect. It's possibly a little bit too extreme at the moment, so I'm going to reduce my linear dodge down to something like about an 82, maybe a little bit lower. Let me come down to maybe a 52. That's better. So that's off, that's on. So you can certainly see that it's switching on. Okay, once again, I'm going to add another adjustment and it's going to be a brightness and contrast. The brightness, I want to kind of brighten this up a little bit to around a 22 and the contrast, I want to go with about a 50. So I'm really pulling this out and making this metallic effect sort of glow. Uh, so that's with it switched on, that's with it switched off. Okay, um, and all I need to do now is basically add some text onto this. So over in the text tool, uh, I'm going to go with this font called Strazua. Okay, uh, and you can find the link to download this in the description below. I'm going to go with a white text uh, and the font size, maybe about a 320. Let's try that. Let's see how big that is. Ooh, too big. Okay, so let's try a 120. Let's have a look. Yep, that's much better. So this could be something like, for example, enter. And then I drag this over here in the middle uh, and I can give this an FX of, um, let's say, some kind of a bevel and emboss. And this time, instead of an inner bevel, I'll go with something like a pillow emboss depth of about 300. All right, so that really kind of looks like a button text now. Could even, for example, give that an FX and some kind of a drop shadow just to make that stand out a little bit more against the background. And then when the button is switched on, we can definitely see the difference there. Okay, using the rulers, and if you're not seeing rulers, that's just view and rulers to switch those on. I'm just going to get pretty close to the edges of the button. And you want to stick relatively close. Okay, and then using my selection, I can then select inside from the top left down to the bottom right and then do image and crop. Select, deselect, and then my black layer on the back, I can get rid of that. And now if we select a rounded rectangle one, do select load selection. And uh, I'm just gonna create a new layer uh, and I'm going to select inverse. So select everything outside. I'm going to use a, a paint bucket tool. On my color, I'm just going to select this color on the top, click OK, and then uh, simply just fill that area in. Do select and deselect. Uh, and now what I want to do is basically cut out everything except for these two inner pieces. So to do that, I can simply just use my selection tool try and get relatively close and just select the inner pieces 
do select inverse and delete to delete out the edges. All right, so that we get this in the piece now. Just going to move this above everything else. Do an FX, bevel and emboss. And I'm going to choose a pillow emboss at around 300 on the depth. Uh, and then I'm also going to give it a color overlay. And I'm going to make that color a bit darker. And click OK. And I can also add an outer glow. Um, now the size on this, I'm going to make about a 75 spread, about a 12. Uh, in fact, 75 might be a bit too much. Let's try 55, just so that this really kind of starts to glow. Now it's a little bit bright at the moment, so I'm just going to click on the color. I'm going to select this bright blue color at the top. Click OK. And this just makes it kind of stand out a little bit more. So if we click OK now, and we can see that when it switches on and when it's off. All right, so that we can see that. Um, we can rasterize that layer if you want, or you can leave it as it is. Uh, I would recommend that if you are going to resize the image, definitely resize, rasterize your effects. Because they are procedural, it will basically rewrite the effects as you shrink the image, which is going to make this glow sort of probably take up half of the button. So I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to choose rasterize that layer since I'm quite happy with that. And you'll notice that it does kind of uh, get rid of some of that glow when I do that. It becomes a more kind of muted color, if you like. Uh, but overall, that is now our button. All right, so don't forget to save this as a PSD. So file, save as as a PSD. And then you can also save that as a PNG. Now, when you want to actually resize this, what I would recommend doing is uh, actually combining everything together. So right click on all of this um, and you can just simply merge those layers. And then it's just the case of going to image, image size, and you can then resize this to any uh, pixel amount that you want. Obviously, you wouldn't want a button this big. So you might want to, for example, resize it to something like 256 by 168, for example. Just click OK and that will then resize. Just make sure that you've still got this um, text on your original PSD so that you can always come back, double click on this and let's say exit this time, for example, and you can change your buttons up as and where you need those. Okay, if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.